Hello everyone, welcome to Red Shishak channel, myself Karthik Pondaswami. This is a short video about like reserved keywords in Java. So let me start with a quick story. So let's say you want to go in a train and you see some compartments which are reserved for someone, right? The meaning that like those compartments are specific for someone who already reserved it for some specific use it. Similarly in Java, this language also has some list of words, keywords which are uh, reserved by Java for special purpose and meaning. So let's say I have a package, uh, you know, these are the words. Let me go quickly about all these keywords. So there is a package. So if you want to create any package, uh, as we explained in our previous videos, so we can use the uh, uh, keyword called package. And similarly, if you want to import the package, I have to use import. And if you want to write any class, so I have to define it as a class. If you want to write as any interface, right, I have to use it as interface and abstract. So abstract means if I want to create any class as abstract or if I want to define any methods as abstract, right, I have to define it as abstract. So these are the basics for Java when I want to define any class, interface or abstract class or anything like that. So these are the reserved keywords which are mainly for basics ones. Now let's go into the access modifier. So you have public, private, protected. So these are the access uh, access modifiers. So let's say if I make it as private, public, you can access it anywhere. Private means only that particular class, only then you can able to access it. Protected means only within that uh, you know package. So so we have a detailed video where we explain about what is public, private, protected, how it differs, and how where we have to use what scenario. So all those stuff we have separate videos. Similarly, so let's say I have a class and interface, right? But I want to use it, right? So inheritance is one of the beautiful feature of Java, right? So in that case, I have to use actions keyword to extend a class from another class and implements is to you know implement a interface, right? So these are the keywords which are reserved by Java. And let's say this and super. So this is for referencing the object. So uh, if I use that, you know, this dot some uh, variable or method, it means like I am referencing to the current object. And if I use super, I am referencing to the parent object. So this is for referencing these two keywords. And let's say I have a class, and what I'm going to do with the class? I have to define some variable, and then I have to write a method to do some perform some action, right? So these variables, whatever I'm defining in Java, so it should be stored in memory, and it should allocate some memory for it, right? So the allocation of memory is based on the data type. Of of the particular variable. So these are the variables we have. So let's say byte, int, short, care, float, double, long, boolean. So these are all the variable data types. So basically based on the requirement, let's say if I want to store some data with some you know decimal points, then I have to go for you know float. If I want to go with some integer values, then I have to go for int. So similarly other uh, data types as well. And this is a, a keyword called return. Return means something like when I want to uh, return something back to the method. So I have to use the keyword return. That is what the uh, keyword is. And let's say when I'm writing a typical Java program, so I have to make sure that my program is able to handle the exceptions when it occurs in the runtime or the compile time. So I have to use everything within a set of blocks. So try catch blocks, we call it as try catch blocks. So try catch, these are the two blocks wherein we have to write our code. And if any code ex gets executed in try, if it throws some exception, then that will be catched in the catch block. And finally, something like, you know, whatever you write in the finally block, whether exception happens or not, finally will be get executed. If I want to have, uh, if I have some requirement wherein I have to close the connections or something like that, then I will write all those, you know, particular piece of code in the finally block. Then finally, something like, you know, if you want to make something as like a constant value uh, for a particular variable, then I can make final keyword and throw and throws. So let's say yeah, if I want to throw some exception, like if I want to throw my custom exception or my user different exception, then I can use the keyword throw to throw some exception. And throws is a keyword which will be used at the uh, method level where you can uh, say some, you know, uh, throw SQL exception or throw null pointer exception, throws null pointer exception, something like that. So these are uh, about the handling the exception uh, area. And let's say you are dealing with, you know, uh, iterating the data and looping the data and you are checking some conditions, right? So this is basically for looping and conditional. So do while for these are the looping statements wherein you are iterating through the data and then uh, you are performing some action. And these are the condition statements wherein you are checking some condition about some particular data and based on that, if you want to make some perform action, so you'll be using these condition statements. So if, else, switch, default, break, continue. So if and else, you know better, right? And switch is something like uh, based on some multiple uh, conditional statement. If you want to switch it to some different cases, you can use it. And default is something if none of the cases are get executed, then default will get executed. And break and continue is something like if I use break statement, then it will come out of the particular loop. And if I use continue, it is coming out of the particular iteration and it continues the second uh, next iteration. So these are about looping and condition statements. So these are all some special uh, you know um, uh, keywords which we use 
uh not often but sometimes in the real time project so let's say enum so enum is something like you know collection of predefined variables so wherein like you want to use some kind of you know uh, let's say day of the week right or the big days right sunday monday tuesday this, this is not going to change right so this particular set of things you know uh, predefined variables you can store it uh, values you can store it in the enum uh, type and instance of instance of is something like you know if you want to check whether this uh, object is uh, instance of a particular class then i can use this particular method this keyword and native is something like you know you can use this particular keyword for a particular uh, modifier of a particular method and then volatile so volatile means something like you know if i want to directly store the data in the direct memory main memory then i can use this volatile keyword so um, there is a keyword called new you know right so basically you are using this new keyword to create an object of a particular uh, you know uh, class right so where you use new keyword so there are uh, some more uh, keywords as a keywords available in java uh, but this is the high level which we use in daily life wherein uh, we should not use these keywords for our personal use so that is why i said like these are not allowed to use uh, for uh, as a identifier so identifiers we will go in the next video we will see what is identifiers so basically this is uh, these are the keywords which are reserved by java language wherein we should not use for our own purpose but because these keywords has its own purpose and meaningful so if you guys like this video please hit the like button and if you guys uh, you know uh, have any questions please post your comments in the comment section and subscribe to the video and share with your friends i'll see you in the next video see you guys